Ik ben zo graag. Ik heb je dat wel niet. Ik ben zo You sure about this, Captain? How do you mean? I really don't know what the fuck's out there. Happy holidays, YouTubers. It's Charlie. So we got new Alien Covenant footage. Let's break it down. Everybody, like, open their face hugger present for Christmas. This is so funny. There are a whole bunch of other trailers that are coming this week, so be sure to subscribe to get everything. Make sure to click that bell to enable alerts so you don't miss out. So you can kind of see what they're doing here. There's a lot of the first three Aliens movies in this, mostly from the first Alien movie and then James Cameron's Aliens. Like, you know, Colonial Marines, more action. The first Alien film was sort of like this silent horror thriller that was a little more atmospheric. Like you had the crew of this freighter land on this derelict planet, and then they discover the alien egg, and it all just unfolds and goes to shit. In Aliens, it's more of a bug hunt. Like you actually have military people on board that are going to help a bunch of colonists clear out the aliens. They know a little bit more about them. So for those of you asking about where this takes place in the timeline, this is a direct sequel to Prometheus. So there are two versions of Michael Fassbender in here. There's the one with Dr. Elizabeth Shaw that escaped at the end of the film to go find the builder's homeworld, like look where their signal was coming from. And then the crew of this new spaceship has their own more advanced version of his model. So you have to remember he's an android made by the Wayland Corporation. So this new spaceship, it's called the Covenant, that, you know, the movie's called Alien Covenant. Covenant is the name of their spaceship. Like, you hear them freaking out as the alien starts to burst out of that guy's back. So the pitch is, is that bound for a remote planet on the far side of the galaxy, the crew of the colony ship, Covenant, find what they believe to be an uncharted paradise. What the crew discovers is a dark, dangerous world whose sole inhabitant is the synthetic David, Michael Fassbender, survivor of the doomed Prometheus expedition. So it sounds like what happened at the end of Prometheus when they took off, they eventually crashed on this planet. We don't know where Dr. Elizabeth Shaw is, but she's on the cast list, so she might be in like a prologue, she might be dead when this crew lands on the planet, she might be somewhere else. But now you kind of see, based on the pitch and the circumstances that they find themselves in, that this is very much the first Alien film and the second Aliens film. So sort of the Sigourney Weaver of this movie is Katherine Watterson, which is funny because she was the person, she was like the main actress from Fantastic Beast. So this is what she looked like in that movie. This is what she looks like in this movie. You know, very Sigourney Weaver, very badass. I can't wait to see her. It's going to be a lot of fun. She looks more like Sigourney Weaver in the second movie in Aliens, like when she was running around in the tank top with the giant gun, than in the first movie when she was still just like the regular crew member just trying to figure everything out. So like I said, this is a prequel to the first Alien film, so they still have absolutely no idea what's going on with the Xenomorphs. But presumably David from Prometheus will inform them because he remembers everything that happened. Like he'll give them the data that they need. Walter is the new version of the android, like the Bishop version. 
You know, like you went from Ian Holmes' version that glitched out, tried to kill everyone in the first Alien film, to the more advanced, trustworthy Bishop. But the funny thing is, is because this is all happening before Ian Holmes' model has been created, maybe we'll see one of these androids glitch out. But for those of you asking about James Franco, he is in the movie. We don't know who he's playing. This kind of looks like him a little bit. He could be the guy that has an alien bursting out of his back which would be pretty badass. Like, you know, very small role, but very insane. That feels like something that James Franco would be on board for. Billy Crudup is the one that looks down into the egg and looks like he gets the face hugger treatment. So this is a bit confusing. This actor does not look like him. So it sounds like a couple people will get face huggers in the movie. But here's the big question. Do you think that this mysterious alien paradise that turns out to be this terrible, terrible planet is the actual planet from the first alien film? Do you think that's what they're trying to imply? Because the race of builders seeded all kinds of planets. Like, they didn't just seed a couple planets, including Earth. That was what Ridley Scott was trying to say in Prometheus, that there was this race of aliens that was trying to seed the galaxy with life, a bunch of different planets. So the space jockey ship from the first Alien film is just one of many ships that they have. So I'll be really interested to see if that's what the case is, because supposedly in the first Alien film, the Wayland Corporation had knowledge of this alien planet in the xenomorphs. So part of the mystery was when Ian Holm was communicating with the computer, talking to the Wayland Corporation back home, and they were like, no, stay. We want you to find out what's going on instead of bailing out like the rest of the crew wanted. So you don't really learn more about their purpose until the second Aliens film. Like the Wayland Corporation wants to weaponize the xenomorphs. So that sort of evolves over time as they learn more and more about them. So we might see some of that teased in this movie, but it looks great. It looks a lot better than Prometheus. Prometheus was okay, but overall I think the first two Aliens films are just vastly superior to everything else. So that's another great question. Let me know, what's your favorite Alien film from the franchise? And what do you think about them dropping this on Christmas? I just think it's so funny that they dropped it at like midnight on Christmas. But in related news, there is a lot of other comic book stuff happening this weekend. I'm dropping some best of comic book holiday stories as well as justice league trailer so we haven't got any confirmation on when that is coming but henry cavill just posted this picture of him hanging out with the rock mysteriously on christmas like he's literally saying that he and the rock are just hanging out dc worlds collide he calls out black adam by name and what a coincidence that people were saying that there's a justice league trailer dropping the weekend of christmas and we see the dc illuminati just happening to meet and hang out with the each other at the same time so just be on high alert for justice league trailer stuff it might come monday it might come a little bit later but either way i think it's like right around the corner and that's why all these dc people are meeting behind the scenes so i'll talk a little bit more about that the next time i post a dc video but i'm also working on some doctor who christmas special and there'll be some sherlock next week for those of you that are asking about that too While you guys wait for that to post, you can click here for my Flash and Justice League Save Christmas video, and you can click here for my last big Justice League teaser breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys tonight.